As you get older, you start to realize that hobbies are almost an essential part of life. They give you so much fulfillment and purpose and value. I didn't realize this until I started my nine to five corporate job and I didn't have the time anymore to do the things that I loved. So it definitely left this huge void in my life. I actually quit my job towards the end of last year and I made it a priority to nurture doing the things that I love for this year. I would definitely say that I'm a certified hobby girl, which means that every once in a while I will hyper fixate on a new hobby, basically do everything everything that I can until I forget about its existence. So I figured now would be the perfect time to show you guys all the hobbies that I've kind of accumulated throughout the years to give you guys an idea of new hobbies that you could potentially start for 2024. This is probably my oldest hobby. I kid you not, I used to have a really old YouTube channel where I would showcase all my Palmer clay charms. And actually, if you go back to the very beginning of this channel, you will see that my first video that I had ever posted was a clay video. I remember just slaving away like at my drawer at 10 years old because I didn't have a desk in my room for some reason. And I would just be making a bunch of these little clay charms and like creations of whatever it is that I was interested in. Like I remember minions used to be really popular back then so I made a whole bunch of minion charms which is so random but so funny. I started losing interest in it as I got older because it definitely became way too time consuming so it wasn't until the end of last year around Christmas time when I was trying to figure out you know what kind of gifts can I make for my friends that would be unique and special but it wouldn't break the bank so I thought about making Palmer clay pendants and I made a video about it on TikTok and Instagram it blew up and so many people were asking me like what is this what type of clay is this for those of you that are not familiar with Palmer clay clay it's a special type of clay that you can bake in the oven and then it hardens so a lot of people will use this to make really cute characters charms accessories earrings things like that like the possibilities are quite honestly endless if you're someone that loves to give gifts I feel like this is the perfect type of hobby to get into but I will say it's very time consuming I think with a lot of hobbies you think you're going to spend you know an hour or two you always end up spending way more time than you actually think you need my word of advice for people that want to start with Palmer clay I will say that it's probably best to just get like the standard starter kit or to just get a few supplies a few clay colors just start off small you know and see what you can do with those limits I think you learn so much more when you have this box around you like a constraint so you can figure out you know these are the skills I need to develop rather than having a bunch of tools and then not really knowing what to do with all of it you learn a lot more when you have way less next up we have my nail hobby this started sometime last year because I was going to the nail salon quite often and I realized that like oh my god this was getting really really expensive but I loved having my nails done so I realized like okay you know what I just gotta learn how to do it I would see so many pretty nail designs I feel like the possibilities with this hobby once again they're pretty much endless like people can get so creative with it but I will say that like the upfront cost to kind of start doing this properly is quite expensive you do need quite a few like tools and supplies to do this properly unlike other hobbies where you can maybe just buy one or two things like you really do need to buy more things with this one it's also a very time-consuming hobby but the end result of it is so so satisfying and it's so fun it's also really great because you can make press-ons too and those can turn into gifts for your friends and family which is really fun also a side precaution which I do have to know if you're not careful with this hobby you can develop a gel allergy so just be very very careful with this next up we have gaming I don't know why but for some reason I used to have the weirdest relationship with gaming back when I was in my super toxic productivity era and that was because I didn't really see the value of gaming and I always thought it was like a waste of time because I felt like oh you know what if I'm not getting like a monetary or productive value out of it then it's not really worth it it took me so many years to realize that it's okay to just do things because you simply enjoy it and for no other reason I actually invested in a pretty crazy like PC setup last year so I could play more intensive games gaming can be such a social thing like with your friends family or with your partner partner. I love playing games with my boyfriend. Right now, I'm super, super into League of Legends. I've been playing like nonstop for some reason, but I also play a bunch of other games. My Steam library is pretty extensive and I'm just so happy that I have like a proper PC. Right now, this is my current strongest hobby hyperfixation and it is journaling. I cannot even begin to express how much journaling has not just been a fulfilling thing for me, but it's also helped me a lot mentally and emotionally. It's a very self-reflective type of hobby depending on how you kind of utilize it. I have also started journaling a lot more than I used to. So if you know me, you know that I have journals for 
pretty much everything. I have a journal with my boyfriend, I have a movie journal, I have a brain dump journal, a creative ideas journal, like literally anything you can think of, a dream journal. What's great about this hobby is that the possibilities with it is so so endless. Like you can be like me and have a whole bunch of stationary supplies, have a whole bunch of stickers and pens, markers, whatever, or you can honestly just have a notebook and pen and it can be just as effective. It's really all just about how you want to use it and what you feel like will be the most fulfilling and efficient for yourself. There's so many ways that you can go about journaling which is why I love it so so much. Next up is cooking. I've never really had a really good relationship with food. Learning more about cooking and just valuing it as a hobby has been really enlightening in some ways. What's really great about this hobby is that you learn so much about food in the process like the science behind it, the history. Right now I'm watching Anthony Bourdain's TV show, his first ever show, A Cook's Tour to learn more about it and it's just been really really fun. For me I find that cooking at the end of the day is very therapeutic something about just doing the prep work, chopping up veggies, things like that. It's always just been very relaxing for me, but I know that for some people it can feel like the complete opposite. Next up we have painting slash sketching. So this is one of those hobbies where I've had the most toxic and consistent relationship with. Like it's a very on and off type of thing. When I was younger, I literally thought that I was going to be an illustrator. I made my parents get me like one of those bamboo tablets, which I never ended up even using. I think I used it only for like two weeks and then I got sick of it. And I think it just kind of made me realize like okay I don't think I'll ever be a gifted like illustrator or anything like that but it's still very fun for me to paint and draw every once in a while. Next up is books. I've always been a huge book lover ever since I was little. I used to read like Anne of Green Gables, Black Beauty, and like all of these really classic tales for some reason. I used to be so so obsessed with fiction books but then as time went on I kind of went through like the stage of like oh my gosh I have to only read productive books which would be like self-help books and that made me fall out of love with reading in some ways. I think like the original magic of why I loved reading so much disappeared so much quicker and it wasn't until I got back into fiction books again that I was like oh my god wait I actually do really love reading a lot I just wasn't reading the right books. It really doesn't matter what you're reading as long as you're enjoying reading. I think that's what's most important. Another thing that I really love about reading is that there's so many people out there that like make notes they like annotate and it's like such a fun fun thing to do. You don't just have to read you can like reflect on the text you can make connections and you just gain so so much out of it I do want to give a little suggestion for anyone that's looking to get back into fiction books I will recommend pachinko if you know me you know that I love pachinko so so much it's like one of those tales that like will forever remain in my top five list of books you can see right here that I also have so many stickies I have pachinko I have an American marriage this was also really well written strange the dreamer for all my fantasy lovers also very very tabbed up as well but absolutely love this book. Lastly I have photography slash video. I would say that this has been my most consistent hobby. All the hobbies that I just mentioned to you guys they've always been very inconsistent. I feel like I'll go through periods where I really love them or I'll forget about them whatever it is. Video and photography has always been the most consistent thing in my life. I don't know what it is. I think it's a combination of loving cinematography so so much and also being a very sentimental person. I love capturing memories and I love making videos for my loved ones. I feel like there's something so so special about being able to utilize this like really strong passion or hobby that you have and being able to create gifts out of them. It's like double the amount of love. My love for this hobby has honestly been the reason why this YouTube channel exists. If you're an OG viewer you will remember that back in the day when I used to make videos I would never show my face. It was all about aesthetics. It was all about like the camera shots and things like that. Uh, but it was never about like me. What's really great about this hobby as well is that you don't really need a lot of equipment especially these days when phone cameras are literally so insane and crazy. I've seen so many great videos that are just filmed on an iPhone, Android, whatever. It's quite unbelievable so you really don't need a fancy schmancy like camera. If you're a sentimental type of person, if you love movies, if you love cinematography, this might just be the hobby for you. Those are all my hobbies but of course there will probably be so much more on the way depending on whatever sort of interest interests I develop. I do want to say to kind of end off this video that it's very very important to kind of recognize like what kind of hobbies you want to pursue but also why you want to pursue them. I often find that when I want to pursue something for all the wrong reasons it's so much easier for me to lose motivation and actually want to continue doing them but when you want to do something out of like your own pure curiosity, enjoyment, and fulfillment they tend to last way longer. Going through the process of getting good at a hobby 
it doesn't really seem as daunting or as difficult because you're really enjoying the process and it's less so about the end goal. So just wanted to end the video off on that note. I hope that this video was helpful and you were able to find some sort of hobby with it. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed this and also follow me on my other social media accounts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!